the reason why most people aren't flying exactly is not necessarily about safety it's probably just uh, the, the financial worries indeed right well let's uh, talk about something completely different uh, yesterday we did see some new um, studies from Imperial College London uh, which looked at the level of protective antibodies uh, that people have after having the virus and they found that in people they wane quite rapidly after infection and as of course antibodies are a key part of our immune defences is this a big concern for us developing herd immunity well let's talk to Professor Paul Elliott he's chair in epidemiology and public health medicine and director of the REACT2 study at Imperial College London. Good morning, Shippo. Good morning. Um, lots of people are saying that this evidence uh, is, is, you know, the, the deal breaker. We're not going to get to uh, um, any sort of herd immunity naturally with people, more and more people having had the virus, keep getting that antibody uh, immunity. Um, is that true? Uh, basically, yes. Uh, we, in our study, which is a very large study, over 360,000 people, um, we had three ways of uh, looking at uh, the antibody response of uh, members of the general public uh, s- selected uh, randomly uh, who were sent a what's called a lateral flow device. So they did a finger prick test and then tested whether they uh, were positive for antibodies or not. And what we found is that uh, in, in June, reflecting the, uh, the peak of the epidemic in March and April, we saw that st- on average 6% of people were testing positive, but that dropped to 4.4% by September, a 25% or more reduction. And that means that over 95% of people uh, in September are not testing positive for antibodies. So the idea that we can have natural immunity and have, uh, uh, you know, herd protection or population protection from natural infection uh, just doesn't hold hold water. Well, but but we, what about, we, we what about all to... the experts pointing out the T-cell immunity and that there's vast swathes of population um, who, who actually just have natural immunity as a result of having encountered other coronaviruses, very similar viruses in the past, and that they and, and they therefore don't, uh, don't ever develop the antibodies. I mean, for instance, in my family, pretty much the whole family caught the virus at the same time in March, uh, uh, the super spreader being a member of the family. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I, I developed antibodies. I've tested positive for antibodies, but uh, my husband and daughter have not, but they were much less sick than I was. Uh, it may well be they've got T-cell immunity. Why are we not looking at that? So T cell immunity is very, very important. The whole of the immune system obviously works in tandem. It's actually very complex, yeah. but the so-called humoral Im- immunity or antibodies is an important part of that. And we know, um, actually we did some tests within our own study because the lateral flow device gives you a qualitative answer, yes, no, do you test positive for antibodies? And uh, at the level that the it tests positive, um, it correlates with neutralizing antibodies, which are the the ones that protect you from the virus getting into cells. Yeah. So it's it is a complex picture. T cell immunity is important, but um, to be, to be honest, the sort of whole immune response um, tends to correlate also with antibody levels. So we do need to know a lot more about how the T cell uh, work uh, immunity works in tandem. With this virus, it's a new virus, so we need we need to understand. But it's a new what, virus, it's, but it's 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 coronaviruses have been around for a very long time. It's a new version, effectively, of a, of a virus we're we we're, we're fairly familiar with. So, and we know how they work, don't we? I mean, and and we're not all. I mean, we, we, we're not all dying of SARS or MERS or swine flu and the like of things. We clearly, you know, we don't have a vaccine for most of those. So, so how is it that we're not all dying from them if we haven't got some level of immunity? SARS and MERS were, were very dangerous viruses, and they, they, did, um, they, they did have a high mortality rate. That's irrelevant. What's the point? We, 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 yeah, we're not all dead, though, you, are we? You, you're mentioning those viruses. So we, we, let's just focus on, on the virus in hand that causes no, COVID. No, 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 it's relevant. My point is, you were saying we, we, don't, we don't have a vaccine for those. We, people probably don't have uh, antibodies for those viruses, and yet we're not all dead from those viruses. Those viruses went around the world, and we didn't see hundreds and hundreds of well, thousands or millions and millions of deaths. Did, Why did, not? Did, People did die from those viruses. I didn't say people didn't die from those viruses. It was contained um, more. It didn't go around the world in the way that it did go around the world. Not okay, not as much as this, but but we didn't see millions. So here we have a pandemic of a a novel virus, which is a dangerous virus, and it's called like SARS and MERS, yes, and uh, which is causing a lot of people to go into hospital and a lot of people to die. Could you address the point I asked you, with all due respect? Sorry, what, what is the point? The point, point, is, point is, how can we not have developed some sort of immunity? We developed immunity to other coronaviruses, clearly. Otherwise, we'd all be dead now. 
Well, the coronavirus is called a common cold. We have we we have um, immunity, but 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 we get re recatch the common cold, so we have transient immunity. What we're showing in our study is that the antibody levels mm. uh, to the first wave of the epidemic uh, have dropped in the population. But I understand that. I'm asking so you about T-cells. So therefore, the, the amount of immunity from antibodies, that, that component of, of immunity has dropped. And the only way we're going to protect the, the whole population is, is it's very simple, two measures. One is to use the public health measures, which are really, really important while we wait for a vaccine. And that means that we have to pay attention to the message about social distancing. Yeah. Extremely important. Um, hand washing and face covers where, where needed. Yeah. And that's how we're going to deal with this over the next period. You just have together, no intention of answering my with... questions then, do you? Sorry? I mean, I'm, I'm, <laughs> Professor, with all due intent, uh, I'm asking you a really simple question. I mean, so, yeah. Professor, I'm not I'm not an expert. You're an expert. But I yeah. don't pretend to be an expert. But Professor Sunitra yeah. Gupta, a professor at Oxford University, an epidemiologist yeah. with expertise in immunology, vaccine development, and mathematical modelling of infectious diseases. She, mm -hmm. along with Carl Hennigan, uh, professor of uh, evidence-based medicine at Oxford University, and many others, saying, well, it can't just be antibodies. It, there's T-cell immunity. This is widely accepted accepted among experts in yeah. your field. Yes. Why, there, there why is, is it not yes. possible that a lot of people in this country and around the world have actually okay. got, already developed some level of immunity okay. through T cells, not Ju just Julia, antibodies? Julia, can I spell it out in, in words of one syllable? There is T cell immunity, but uh -huh. we are in the middle of a pandemic. And at the moment, so we're doing another study called REACT1, which is looking at the spread of the virus in the population. Yeah. The virus is spreading everywhere in this country. It's going up. And despite whatever immunity levels there might be, the facts are that the virus is the R value is still above one and the virus is continuing to spread at an alarming rate through the population, not only in young people, but right across the age range to the vulnerable people at older ages. So just just looking at the facts, we are not being protected from this virus. Well, apart from the fact that we're not all dying at the same rate. And can it just finally, can you explain Sweden then? What's happening in Sweden? So what's happening in Sweden is that the, the infection rate is going up. How many deaths are they having per day? Uh, I'm afraid I can't. I can tell, tell you the coming. figure. It's two. Two people well, are die. A population of 10 million and two people a not, day die. I, I don't particularly want to comment on Sweden. I'm going to comment on what's happening. Oh, no, 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 but in, it is in, relevant. In if, England, and well, England, how on earth are people, England, given that we've not got these lockdown and tier measures on all the things that are suggested by SAGE and others in Sweden, and they're living largely free lives, not wearing masks, social distancing, yes, some people working from home, but going to bars and restaurants, living their lives relatively freely, and yet two people a day are dying. Yes, it's going up slightly because, of course, it's, it's autumn. So, we know so, this so, is a respiratory illness. How do you explain that? In the context of we all we can all possibly die from this virus because we haven't got antibodies. So the situation in Sweden is different. The population density is different. The culture is different. In the in the UK, in England, which is what we're measuring, uh, the rates are going up. Uh, more people are going to hospital and more people are dying. Yes. And 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 if they continue to go up, more yet more people go into hospital and yet more people die. What we have to do is control this virus. We have to turn the R value down, and we have to. Um, and, and, and the fact of, you know, are we all immune? No, we're not all immune. No one said we were all immune. We can, no one said that. Because we can that. see that the virus is continuing to rise and we have to do something to address that. What we can do is public health measures until we get a vaccine. I, I just find it absolutely extraordinary that someone as eminent and knowledgeable about this as you refuses to accept that your explanation does not explain why in Sweden people can live a normal life and only two people a day are dying from this virus. If what you are saying is the case and people do not have any T-cell immunity and, and there's no way of creating herd immunity in this sort of way, um, then they would be dying. There'll be body bags all over the streets of Stockholm and there aren't. So the rates of, of infection in Sweden are higher than amongst their, their uh, Scandinavian neighbours. So Sweden is a very interesting case. They, they've taken a slightly different route, but, but at the end of the day, they do socially distance. They uh, are taking care. And, um, uh, you know, Sweden is, uh, you know, have, have their own issues to deal with. In, in England and in the UK, I come back to the fact that the, rate, the rates of the virus I know, you can, are you know, continuing yeah. to increase. We know that. They do that every autumn. It's respiratory disease. And every respiratory disease, the deaths rates and the infection rates go up every autumn. Professor Paul Elliott, I, I know you've got no intention of answering my direct question. But I'll give up. 8.51 is the time. This is Talk Radio. Online. 
on DAB and on the Talk Radio app. Talk Radio. At